the opposition are doing everything they can to stop businesses doing anything. Question number five, Melissa Lee. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Social Development and asks, what announcements has she made on ensuring those working with children recognise and report suspected child abuse as part of the government's white paper for vulnerable children? The Hon. Paula Mr. Speaker, uh, we are introducing a range of initiatives to better support for pr professionals who work with children and help ensure that ch they put the child's needs first. Uh, we will introduce legislation that will require agencies working with children to have child protection policies in place, specifically ensuring that their staff knows how to recognise um, and report suspected child abuse. Melissa Lee. Supplementary question. What support will there be to train those working with children to recognise the signs of child abuse? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Um, Mr Speaker, the situation is, as it is currently um, is quite astounding. That many professionals working with children are lucky if they even come across one lecture on identifying the signs of abuse during their many years of training. Our action plan makes it clear that we will have all frontline public sector staff who work with children to recognise and detect the signs of child abuse to get this training. This continues on with this government's initiative, which began in May 2010. We have now trained over 2,500 frontline professionals, thanks to child protection workshops predominantly run by Child Matters. Melissa Lee. Supplementary. What changes are required to ensure these initiatives are put in place? The Honourable Paula Bannon. Uh, Mr Speaker, our expectation is that where a professional suspects there is a case of abuse, that this will be reported and we will be making this easier for them. But this is a new requirement and will be supported by a change in legislation and by a code of practice that makes it clear that everyone working with children has a responsibility to repeat, report suspected abuse or neglect. Quest oh, Jacinda Ardern, supplementary question. To the Minister. What evidence does she have that the predictive risk tool contained in her white paper will do more good than harm when it is untested and has been panned by experts in the field. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's fair to say that there's been two trains of thought on it. So some, as the uh, member says, have been against it and some have been for it. That's why we've said that it's a prototype. It needs far more testing. It needs a group of experts around it to make sure that it is safe. Um, it's not something we're rolling out tomorrow. It's something that we will do over time. But if we have the facts that say that there are a group of children that are most at risk risk of being abused or neglected before they are abused or neglected, it would quite frankly be negligible not to do something with them. Question num I beg your pardon, Jacinda Ardern. Does she agree with Dr Patrick Kelly, a member of her own expert advisory group on abuse and neglect, who said he was blindsided by her predictive risk model, that it is essentially an experiment and, quote, they have no idea whether that intervention will work or not. The Honourable Paula Bennett. I think it's what we do with the information that's most important. So who's the ones that yell out, you can put them in one place and that's fine. It's going to be up to what sort of support we put around it um, and what sort of initiatives go with it. So I hear what um, Dr Patrick Kelly has said. He is an expert and someone I have a huge amount of respect for in this field. I think it's the initiatives and the support we put behind it that will um, make the biggest difference. Sorry. Supplementary. Supplementary question. Supplementary to the minister. Will she dump her risk prediction tool if she finds abused children aren't picked up by it? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, I think that's about 20 steps you know, ahead of where we're at now. So what we've done is we've put out the paper. We've then got a lot of work to do around it. I mean, the member should know um, the, uh, the professional that's put this predictor tool together. They haven't done it by luck or by good means. They've actually done a whole lot of research behind it. We now need to get the right, um, the right experts and the right academics to make sure that we make the best of it, and then we will see where that ends up. But I'm not going to predict what could happen in three or four years' time with something that's yet to be fully developed. Question number six, the Honourable, Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, my question is...